Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. It's been a wild couple of days uh, for the S&P 500 here uh, with the market down 2.5% after the CPI release yesterday that came in above expectations. Both the headline CPI and the core CPI were a disappointment, initially leading the market down and then snapping back up very rapidly. We're gonna talk about that in this video, but more importantly, we're gonna discuss in this video why I think a bottom is actually in the process of forming here from a technical standpoint and why the recovery off that low uh, could be very powerful. Let's start by quickly going back to the 30th of September right here uh, on this day where we posted a few very important charts right here uh, 30th of September highlighting why a bottom was very likely close and why the 30th of September was actually probably a very attractive buying opportunity if you have an investment horizon of around six to 12 months you can see the oversold reading we got uh, on that Friday. This was leading into the 200 week moving average right here uh, that we're currently right above as we speak right now, the S&P 500 is trading above this 200 week moving average and with a bullish RSI setup here. You can see price making a lower low as we test the 200 week moving average and the RSI making a higher low. Same setup as 2000 and 15, same setup as 2011. You also had this type of divergence leading up to the 2009 bottom right here. Uh, and then as a caveat, you have divergence right here leading to this low that occurred in 2008, right before around a four or five month rally on the S&P 500, right before the major crash uh, on the S&P. So yes, this of course wasn't an ideal buying opportunity looking out uh, six months. Uh, but in the near term, it did trigger a nice reversal in the market. So those were really the first few pieces of evidence that we were potentially coming towards a low. When I see this chart, uh, I, I just think, wow, you know, this is the type of setup that you look back on and think, why in the world was I not buying here? How did I not see that setup? And of course you get caught up in the macro, you get caught up in the bad news, the media that, that's very pessimistic on stocks. But if this is your first market correction, let me be very clear. I've never seen the media time a market bottom. I've never seen a consensus time a market bottom. So you are going to be going against the herd if you're trying to look for a bottom in the market. Bottoms by definition occur when things look their worst. You almost have to be out of your mind to be uh, optimistic at a market bottom. Now, just based on these factors, we also had divergences in S&P 500 new lows, which told a very similar story right here. Also, we saw those divergences uh, at the bottom of the bear market in 2002 or 2003 right here. Uh, and 1998. But to really dig a little bit further into the probability of a market low, we have to look at the short term technicals. So let's put up the RSI right here. Uh, and we have this lower low right there on the price. All right. And you can see that we did make a lower low during that uh, CPI release right there. The market was down very significantly and we had a higher low on the RSI. So that's bullish divergence. It tells you that the momentum of this trend has slowed down significantly. Unless you get a new catalyst here that pulls the market down further, it's hard to imagine why you'd get a big waterfall sell off. Now, of course, you know, this is just our opinion. Uh, it's just our view on the market. And when it comes to the short term price action, I don't I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just here to give you my opinion based on uh, the things I've learned in the market in the past. It's an honest, genuine opinion. But of course, you have to do your own research. Now, the last piece of evidence uh, that I want to discuss that's very interesting and all of these developments have happened just very recently, you know, very rapidly, you have this a bullish divergence setup, you have an oversold reading, you have the 200 week moving average being tested. And you have this bounce here that occurred off that Friday low, that was one of the most powerful two day bounces we've seen since COVID, right? And you can see how beautiful of a timing indicator that was in 2020 right there. Boom. And we discussed this last time 2018. Again, boom, that marked the exact bottom in 2015 as well. 
and you got a cluster of readings that weren't necessarily successful in 2008 uh, and one marking the exact bottom in 2009, and then 2002 and 1998, very successful reading. So not guaranteeing a bottom, but increasing the odds that the strength we're seeing is really a change in market behavior. And the strongest rally we've seen, the strongest two-day rally we've seen uh, since 2022, right? We haven't seen that type of, of strength throughout the entire year so far. Now, of course, depending on what uh, your trading strategy is and, and what you believe is an efficient uh, investment strategy. Uh, something we like to take a look at as well is the seasonality aspect. We've been in a very uh, tough season right here. Before we dive into that, don't forget to take a couple of seconds to smash that like button as hard as you can. We really work hard on these videos to try and give you guys the best research, the best opinion on the market. Of course, we're not going to get everything right. But at the end of the day, that is our goal is to help you guys as much as possible. So if you enjoy what we provide and you want to support the channel, don't forget to hit that like button. It is really appreciated. We've been in a very uh, tough season right here, September through to the first half of October is a tough season uh, for the S&P 500. But look at where we are right now. Uh, we're at the bottom right there of that tough seasonality period. The second half of October, November, December, those are typically the best months of the year. So we are getting into that zone right now as we speak, which is just one uh, final piece of evidence that's useful to take into account. In terms of targets, in terms of resistance, now of course, I'll start with the top 5,200 points. That is still our six to 12 month target for the S&P 500. Now, you know, this target for the S&P, we don't actually have the S&P 500 on the model portfolio we have on gameoftrades.net. We have specific sectors that we think are going to actually outperform on the way up to that target. But it's very important to understand where the broad market is going. And that's where we think, uh, based on our work on both earnings and multiples, so valuations and disinflation and what happens to valuations during typical uh, disinflationary periods, that's where we think the market is heading. Again, uh, we could be wrong. But now in the shorter term, what are the big resistance levels uh, to watch out for? We've got the 3,900 point level, very important right here corresponds to that trend line as well. Capturing these two highs would capture also the high here. So you'd expect a reaction off the zone here. And then you've got the 4,150 point level right there. Uh, also massive, massive resistance, lots and lots of selling power right there. Uh, lots of disappointed investors that want to get out uh, at 4,100 points. So that's going to be a tough resistance, uh, especially considering the, the trend line resistance we have here. So that's really where all the work needs to be done uh, for the S&P. Once those two levels are cleared, those two trend lines, those two big horizontal levels, once those are cleared, the odds of seeing the this target getting hit in relatively short order increases significantly. Right now, you know, it's hard to make the case that we're going to see a move straight up. Uh, you know, could it happen? You need a lot of uh, improvement on the macro aspect of things. We do expect those improvements to come, but how quickly they come, that's another question. So uh, that's this is the battle zone here. And so we'll be watching how the market reacts uh, at those different levels. And once we do break that macro trend line, two big targets, right now 4550 points uh, to the 4650 points and then ultimately 5200 points which is around uh from current levels as i'm making this video it's around a 42 percent move from current levels of course we're not going to go there in a straight line and of course as we get closer to that target if we get closer to that target uh, we'll be taking profits of the table, we'll be changing the allocation of the model portfolio, we'll be increasing our hedges to protect ourselves against the next economic environment that we think is coming in the second half of 2023. But of course, what do I know? That's just my opinion. Leave a comment down below to tell us what you think. Uh, now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.